Hi guys, welcome back. So today I've got another tutorial for you here where we're going to be creating this kind of um, horizontal slider. And you can see when we slide, uh, we get these kind of this skewed effect on our images. Okay, so it's all created using vanilla JavaScript. There's no libraries used here. Um, yeah, it's quite a, a cool effect. I'm seeing a lot of websites implement this kind of um, side scrolling uh, functionality now. So yeah, as I say, hope you enjoy and let's get going. Cheers guys. Okay guys, so to get started, you can see I'm in VS Code. Um, I've just got the three usual files here. We have an index.html file, a style.css file, and one app.js file as well. Um, I also have a folder of images here, just containing um, different pictures of the capital cities in Europe. Um, if we come out of that, just go into the index.html file. You can see here, I've just um, I've created some boilerplate already. We just, uh, in the body, we have one uh, container div with a, uh, a class of container and we have uh, six child divs in here each of a class of box and for each separate div i've just given uh, a class of the number of the, of the div so we have one two three four five six okay and then kind of underneath this div we have our script tag linking to our app.js file and i'll just also uh, link to our style sheet uh, style.css in the header okay so now if we um, come to our style.css file I'm just going to get the um, the global settings. So we'll just say star, we'll say margin zero, padding zero, and box sizing uh, border box. I'm just gonna open live server when I'm into that HTML file just so we can see our changes as we make them. Okay, underneath this, we're going to say, um, set our body and HTML. And here we're going to say background color I'm going to give us a background color of a dark gray, okay, like so. And then I also just want to give this a height of, we'll say, 6,000 pixels, okay, because we want to be able to scroll the, the uh, page, like so, okay. And then come underneath this, we're going to select our container next. And here we're going to say position fixed, okay, because when we scroll down the page, we don't want um, our container to scroll up, we want it to stay fixed to the screen, okay. Um, this is going to be our slider, okay, so we're going to slide horizontally across the screen. And then underneath this, we're going to say display. We want to display this in a flex, is a flex box fashion. So it, um, the default for flex is just to display the images, the slider images horizontally, okay. And then underneath this, we're going to say justify content, space around, just to give the uh, images within our slider a nice even space in between them. And then we're going to say top. 20 viewport heights so that's where we want our container to be positioned from from the top of the screen so we're just doing 20 viewport heights which should be around here and then we're going to say here we're going to give the container a width of 6,000 pixels okay just so we can just a nice amount of space to scroll horizontally and then we're going to say two more very important uh css selectors here we're going to say transition and here we're going to say transform, okay? We're going to set the transform uh, transition e uh, element, and we're going to give this a timing of 0 0.15 seconds, okay, for our animation. And then we also want to say will change, okay? I'm going to say transform in here. And what this does, this just tells the browser that we're going to be changing the transform property for multiple elements. So this just uh, prepares the browser and makes it fully optimized for this kind of uh, animation change to occur, okay? And then kind of underneath here, we're going to select our box elements. And here we're going to say position relative. And then we're going to say here a width, I'm gonna give each box a width of 500 pixels like so. And then we'll say um, a height of 480 pixels. Okay, and then uh, we're gonna just actually that'll do for now. If we just come to here now, I'm just going to select each of our individual boxes. Remember, we gave them a class of one, and I'm going to say uh, background uh, image in this case, and we're going to use the URL and we're going to point it to our image folder and the first image. So one in this case, and we're going to do a background size. Um, actually, we can just do that in our main box. We'll do a background size of cover up here. Background size, cover, like so, okay? So now you can see we have our images. If I just scroll up, you can see, oh, it's just one for now, so we need to do the others. Okay, so if we come underneath this, we'll just do, change this to two. 
again change this to two as well okay now you should we should have our second image next up here and there it is okay so let's just do the same for the other uh, four boxes say three and then we'll say four and then we'll say five and then finally six and then we just change that to six like so okay and then one more thing i want to do is actually just center the images so we'll say background position here and then we'll just say center back so and you can see our images are nice and centered now okay so now what we need to do that's it pretty much it for our css let's go into the javascript next and the first thing we want to do here is just select our main slider container okay so i say const uh, container equals document dot query selector and we'll just say container like so okay and then kind of underneath this we're going to say window dot on scroll okay we want to list that for a scroll then we're going to make this trigger this function okay so we do an arrow function here and we're just going to say um, container dot style dot left oh I didn't do that dot style like so dot left that's going to equal um, and we're going to say here do some back ticks do a template literal we'll say window dot scroll wire and then we'll just say pixels like so, okay? And we're going to need, when I scroll down, you can see it moves the wrong way. So we need to change this to minus, okay? So now you can see when we scroll down the page, our slider's moving horizontally, okay? So now what I want to do is I want to add like a distortion effect when we scroll, okay? So I want these images to be skewed when we scroll across the, um, the screen. So in order to do that, the first thing we need to do is come underneath this and we need to get the position of the left, um, if I just uh, change this, sorry, let's just change the background color of our container for now, just so you can see. Background color, we'll say, just give us an aqua color. Okay, so you can see, we wanna get the left position, okay, of uh, this container. So in order to do that, if it comes to our app.js, I'm just going to say, uh, let uh, current position, so current pos equal, and we're going to say um, uh, container, dot get bounding client rect like so and here we can say dot left okay so if i console dot log the current position you know so you should see it's at naught when we start okay so it's to the very left of the screen okay so now what we want to do is underneath this i'm going to say const i'm going to create a function called call distort like so okay that's going to equal again an arrow function and here we're going to say let new position or new pos equal and we're going to do the same thing we set that container and we'll use that get bounding client rect method and then select the left okay and then kind of underneath this we're going to say next we're going to create a difference variable so let diff we want to calculate the difference between the new position and the uh, previous current position okay so we'll say let diff equal new position minus current position like so there should be an equal sign in there and then kind of underneath this we need to set a speed variable next we say let speed equal and we're going to take that difference variable we just created and we're going to times that by 0 0.35 just to slow it down a bit and then come underneath this we're just going to say uh, container dot style dot transform equals back ticks then we're going to do trans uh, sorry not translate skew and we'll skew on the x-axis like so okay then open parentheses template literal in there and we're just going to take that speed variable we've created okay and then we'll write deg after okay and then what we want to do after this once this is finished is we want to um, make this current position the new position that was that was created okay so we'll say current position equals new position.
like so. Okay, and then one more thing we need to do in here is we need to call this um, call this stalk uh, method over and over again. Okay, just so we can always um, see where we where the um, container is and we can uh, apply the relevant animation. So to do that, we're going to use the request animation frame method. Okay, and then we're going to just input there call the stalk. And what this request animation frame does, you'll see if we console.log uh, called, you can see now if we just uh, do this call to stall, call this outside the function, call to stall, you can see uh, the function is being called over and over again because this request animation frame, okay? Um, and this request animation frame will just call the function in the optimal way for the browser to handle, okay? So now if we come out of this, if we come to our browser, you should see now we get the kind of images are skewed as we scroll along. It gives a nice skewed effect. Okay, I'm just going to take that blue background off. Coming that out. Okay, so there you go. We get that nice kind of skewed effect going on there. And that's just how you create this kind of effect in vanilla JavaScript, guys. I think it's a really cool effect and it's cool to. I've seen a lot of websites implementing this kind of horizontal scrolling as well. So.